that's how you go about that question there. So, organic chemistry. Again, my, I think my um, little animation is a little bit skewish. So, organic chemistry is the next step within this. So now that we've sort of discussed isotopes, we've discussed moles and molar mass, now we're going to discuss the actual structure of the molecule. So, how can we classify molecules using structure? Well, we look at this thing called organic chemistry. So, organic chemistry is a study of compounds with carbon. So, carbon is an extremely versatile element. Um, it has four valence electrons, which means it can either lose four or gain four. So, it can be carbon negative four, it can be carbon positive four, it can do either. It can be carbon negative three, carbon positive three. It can be any of these things. It can do what it wants. Um, they can form um, covalent bonds with other carbon molecules. Um, and they can form single, double, or triple bonds. Um, all organic compounds contain carbon, but can also contain hydrogen, oxygen, sulfur, chlorine, halogens, lots of other things. Everything else is classified as inorganic. So if it doesn't have carbon, it's inorganic. It must have carbon to be organic. Um, hydrocarbons are compounds formed between carbon and hydrogens only. So that's what we call a hydrocarbon, and that's what we're going to be working with. So, hydrocarbons. These are the different ways you can represent them. So there are four, really three distinct ways for one, two, four for three, four. This gets added in three, four. This is what you worry about for one, two. You need to be able to represent hydrocarbons in these three different ways. There is the molecular formula, which is just the basic what is there. The structural formula, what does it look like? The semi-structural formula, what does it look like if I were to not draw any lines? Is what I think of that. So as you can see here, the semi-structural formula has the CH3, the CH2, which is this bit here, the CH2, this bit here, then the C-O-O-H, C-O-O-H. So without drawing any lines, it represents your molecule, and that's how it goes about it. So we're going to go through quickly alkanes, alkynes, and alkenes which are the three basic types of hydro of hydrocarbons and then that is about it um we, we're going to quickly touch on functional groups but we won't go through them in detail um because we're probably not going to i didn't put them in there so we wouldn't have enough time so this is the last little topic for today so alkanes hydrocarbons are composed of only hydrogens and carbons and hydrogens alkanes are hydrocarbons that contain only single bonds so this is not a single bond so it's not a hydrocarbon it's not a alkane this is not a single bond, so it's not an alkane. This is not a single bond, this is not a single bond. These ones only have single bonds. These ones only have single bonds. These are alkanes. These are known as saturated, meaning that they only contain single carbon carbon bonds, which the following compounds are saturated. These two are, these two are not, because this has a double carbon to carbon. These have double, double, double carbon to carbons. So, alkanes. Each alkane differs um, to a previous member by CH2. So, a series of molecules are different by CH2 um, from a previous member are known as a homologous series. Compounds of the same homologous series have a similar structure, similar physical properties, uh, similar phys chemical properties, and the same general formula. So, if you look at this here, when we have five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, we have 12 hydrogens, one, two, three. So, there's your four bonds coming off it, as you can see there. One, two, and there's this other two bonds, so four bonds, one, two, other two bonds, four bonds, one, two, other two bonds, four bonds, one, two, three. So that gives us 12. Now, if I add another carbon in, I go up to hydrogen 12. Add another carbon in, hydrogen 16. Another one, 18. So they go up by CH2 every time. Alkanes share general properties. They are non-polar, and so they're insoluble in water. They have a high boiling point, um, and the boiling point increases as alkanes increase in chain length um, and dispersion forces increase. So a high boiling point at long chains and a low boiling point at short chains, sorry. Um, they have a general formula of this. So how, however many carbons you have, you multiply by two and then add two. So as before, we had C5 and therefore we have two times five is 10 plus two is 12. And if we go back to that last slide, it had 12, C5, H12. Um, alkanes are named by finding the stem name according to the number of carbons, which we'll talk about in one second, and then we add A to the end. So, I don't want to go through structural isomers, I want to go through naming. So, quickly, 
this is the names for the number of carbon. So if I have one carbon in my chain, I call it meth. If I have it two, I call it F. If I have three, I call it prope. If I have four, I call it bute. If I have five, I call it pent and so on down to dec. Dec is the last one you need to know. Now, I am working with alkanes, so I add ane to the end. So methane, ethane, propane, so forth, butane, pentane. That is how you name these molecules. Notice how this is only two, this is three. So that's how I go about naming these molecules. So, go to this one now. So this is what we refer to as nomenclature. And this is just the method of which we name things. Um, as I said, alkanes, you have the, the meth s propute, and you add the ane. And as I says here, carbon with one molecule is meth. And then you add the ane to the end and you get methane. Now, you can also have um, what we call isomers. So these are slightly different to isotopes. Isomers are where we have the exact same structural sort of the exact same uh, molecular formula. So I have C4H10, as you can see here, I have C4 and then I have H10. But if I change the shape of the molecule, this is still an alkane, it just has a side chain now. Um, this molecule has the same number of carbons, one, two, three, four, same number of hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So which of these do you think would have a greater boiling point? It's actually a very interesting question. Um, so with these molecules, which one would have a greater boiling point um, comes down to how they can pack together. So these two, this one here is like a straight chain. So if you have lots of straight chains, you can pack them together really tightly. This one would actually have a higher boiling point. This one here has a side chain, which means it can't pack together as tightly. It's like little balls that don't pack together that well. This one actually have a lower boiling point. So as much as these are very similar properties, are very similar, similar chemicals, they have the exact same number of molecules, they would actually have very similar, similar chemical properties. The only difference is that this side chain makes them harder to compact and makes them with a lower boiling point. So that's just one little point there as well. Um, and this system that we refer to as nomenclature is actually given the name the IUAPAC, the IUPAC system. So don't worry about what this means. This is just the system by which we name. So the steps that they physically say to you, and this is what we're going to talk about, is we find the longest unbranched carbon chain. We number the carbon, carbon atoms in that chain from the end of the chain that will give the smallest number to the branching groups. So we'll discuss that in a second. We name the alkyl group after the alkane from which they are derived. We name and number the position of each alkyl group. Um, if they're identical side chains, we use D or we use tri, and then we talk about the length. So this naming, I want you to come back to if you need. So alkane side chain, we've got this alkane side chain here. What we're going to do with this is we're going to say, all right, this is an alkyl group because this is a side chain. This is the longest chain and this is the side chain. Now, I could have very easily said, this is the side chain and this is the longest group. It doesn't really matter. And that's what's really important. It doesn't matter when there's multiple ways that you can say there is a longest group. It doesn't matter. You just choose one. There's no, you can choose any of them and they'll all be right. It doesn't matter which one you choose because any of these three would be correct. But for now, we're going to go with the green. So we're going to say this one down here is the alkyl group. The alkyl group here has one carbon long. So we refer to it as methyl. So we add ill to the end and it's one carbon long, so it's meth. If this was two carbons long, we call it eth. Three, probe, four, bute, etc. This molecule here has a really important name though. So what we need to do is go through our system. We have three carbons long. Three is probe. So it's going to be probe. That is terrible. It's a terrible peak. So it's going to be probe. It only has single bonds, so it's a. It has a side chain. The side chain is going to be referred to as methyl. So methyl will go at the front. So methyl. So it will be called methyl propane. And now what you would normally do is you would number what carbon this comes off. So one, two, comes off the second one. So you'd say two. However, really important, with propane, how many places can you have a side chain? 
only one because if I put the side chain at the end, that now becomes butane, that becomes the longest chain. So there's only one place I can put the side chain, which is in the middle. Therefore, it's only ever at the second carbon. Therefore, you don't need to number it because if it doesn't have a side chain, so if it does have a methyl group, it has to be the second one. There's no point in putting a number there because we know where it has to be. So that's how that works there. So then quickly, unsaturated molecules. Unsaturated molecules are molecules with a bond of some sort. So this should actually be ethene, not ethine. So this should be ethene with an E. So let me uh, scrub out what I just drew. This is ethene because it's got two bonds. And the next one is ethine because it's got three bonds. Um, and these are unsaturated molecules. So alkenes. So alkenes are exactly the same as alkanes, but they've got a double bond. And therefore, our general formula is actually Cn, H2n, because we lose two hydrogens here and here. The name ends with ene, and you need to number where the ene is. So in this case here, this would be but1ene, because it's at the first sort of bond. This one here, you don't need to number it because there's only one bond. This one here, if I put the double bond here rather than here, it's still going to be one because then I number from this side instead because it doesn't matter which side you number from. You just number from the closest to the, to the extra thing that's going on. So in this case here, I would have numbered from this side if it was on here. But as you can see here, we've got butane, which is but one e um, because it's, no, it's put here. If it was here, it would be but two ene um, so you put the number in there but exactly the same naming then you've got alkynes which is just the last one of our group these are triple bonds these ones have a general formula of cn h2n take two because you lose four because of the triple bond um, exactly the same you know you can number them this one should be numbered so this would be but it should be but one iron so you have to number them. And that's essentially how that works. So practice question, just quickly, what do you think the name of this molecule is? I want you to have, just take a second and have a think about it. <clears throat> I'll give you all sort of a minute to have a think. All right, hopefully I've given you enough time. So we've got one, two, three, four, five in our longest chain. So this is gonna be called pent. Um, I'm not gonna bother writing it down because I just haven't given myself enough room, but um, this molecule is gonna be pentane because there's only single bonds. So pentane, and it's got a methyl group. It's got a singular side chain. So it's gonna be called two methyl, because it's on the second carbon. So 2-methylpentane is the name, 2-methylpentane. All right, then have one last go and then we will jump through um, to the end. So last practice question, have a go at this one. Let's slide 100.
All right. Um, for this one here, we've got one, two, three. So we've got pro, and we've got no side chains, and we've only got one double bond. And if it was here, we would have called it one. If it was here, we call it one. So we don't give it a number. We just call this propene. That's how we go there. So very good. Um, here's another one here. If you want to have a go at it, you can have a go at it in your own time. There's another question here as well. If you want to have a go at it. So just quickly, these are functional groups. Um, you will go through these. These would be the next step. However, we're not going to go through them now. We've been through these ones here. Um, the other ones that you would go through is an alcohol an aldehyde, a ketone. These ones are year 12 specific. So you wouldn't go through them this year. You'll go through them in year 12. So don't worry. Um, you go through carboxylic acid. You go through an ester. You go through an ether. And then amine and amide are also year 12 specific. So these are the ones that you would go through. Um, this one is also a little bit year 12 specific, but you may also go through it in year 11. These are the ones that you will go through. You also go through haloalkane. Oops. Um, so you go through haloalkane, alcohol, carboxylic acid, ester and maybe ether, but these are the ones that you need to do in year 11. The other ones you need to do in year 12, which are aldehyde, ketone, amine, amide, and then probably ether. So these are the, these are the ones that you will learn throughout the next two years.